Hello and welcome to a stream. It's been a while. Can everyone hear me? Get started a little bit early, I guess. But also, I'm guessing we're not going to have that many viewers because I didn't give that fast of a advance notice. Maybe I'll uh, ping the Discord real quick. Discord is broken. Anyway, um, so I've been gone for a while because I was changing jobs and the video I released um, about the Unigo 60, 66 is because I finally had a little bit of time to work on something like that because I took a month off between jobs. Um, you are allowed to be here if you are not neat, but you know, know that you will be treated as second class at this point. And I'll get started at right at 2 p.m. Lunch breaking, nice. Thank you, Everstorm. For those that don't know, uh, NEAT is an acronym for not in not employed in education or in training. And I am voluntarily NEAT for a month, or have been. I'll be working starting next week. But yeah, let's get started. Sorry. Today we're going to be building the HBCP, famously featured on The Verge, I believe, with Teha Types when he went big. And it's been sitting in my closet for quite some time now. Um, I do have the polycarbonate version here, um, brass plate as prescribed by the designer who is Heine Bush. Let's just take a quick look around the board. You know, it's polycarbonate, you've seen this kind of thing before. It does seem like the finish is a little smoother than most, um, definitely better than the E6.5, definitely better than the... Uh, was it 8, 8x Mark II? Um, when I was on his Discord, uh, we were told that the polycarbonate was given a coating. Um, that was new to me. I don't know how common that is, but it's that one of the highlights of the board for me is this rear sort of uh, rounded portion here. I don't know what it is about it, but I really like it. Um, and otherwise the board is just kind of a wedge. Uh, not really sure what all the hype is um, around this board in particular, but I bought this uh, keyboard for one specific key set. And we'll get to see how that is or what that is later on in the stream. Um, I, for undisclosed reasons, will not be doing a review on this. So um, I'm going to be building it with uh, switches that will be its final state. How much do these go for on mech market nowadays? 
I remember it being ridiculous when I last checked, but that might have been a year ago. One thing about this board was that when the when I got it in the mail, the screws were they felt like they were glued in. A little bit unsettling to undo them. I don't know why why that is. I do have other switches, believe it or not. I forgot to bring the scale this time, but this is quite heavy, even though this is just plastic and brass. Yes, I do have stabs. Like, believe it or not, I do build keyboards that are okay to use. You can see the weight shape is kind of similar to the, I don't know if you guys remember, the Jer, Jer Mini, that white keyboard, um, that white 65% with the macro column on the left. If you remember that, had a asymmetrical weight where the bottom, um, the inside portion had um, like a pass through for the weight. Um, but only on the left. Uh, this one, that one was kind of a mystery, but this one makes a little more sense because it's right over the 60% portion, your typing area. Um, I know, was it the Jane V2 CE or whatever did it? Not really sure if it has any impact, but you know. The PCB unfortunately doesn't have a daughter board. Um, in the sense that we usually mean it. Uh, there is a daughter board just for the lighting here. But, yeah. You can see pretty standard fare going on here. Let's see, we got seven point top mount. Um, I was provided with O-rings for this, but I don't think I'm going to be using it. Um, the I briefly considered building with ISO, but there was some pushback, so I will not. Big slab of weight. This is actually probably more weight than bottom. And I think the brass is also coated, but it took on some of my fingerprints, so not really sure what's going on there. All right, now let's start to get onto the build. Not a fan of having two different types of screw heads, but what am I going to do?
the stream is probably actually gonna be pretty short. I've lubed the switches already and the um, the stabs, so it's just gonna be assembly, some first impressions, and that's gonna be it. I'm willing to wager less than one hour. And here are the set stabs. Some of these I'm using clip-ins because I run out of screw screw-ins. I've been trying to reduce um, new purchases of any parts or keyboards because uh, taking a little bit of a break from the hobby, you know, you look at my closet and it looks like the closet of somebody who has a problem. So I'm going to be using all of my old parts and liquidating some of the stuff that I don't need. Speaking of timer, I've been watching some speedruns lately, namely, namely uh, Lil Laggy. Like I don't even like Souls type games, but something about it really compelling. I honestly don't know what stabs these are. These are probably cherry, but I wouldn't be surprised if there are mixed parts in there. Because at some point I disassembled all of my stabilizers and uh, Ultrasonic cleaned them all together. So all of the parts are mixed up now. I am not sorry. You guys watch any speedrunners? You know, at some point I speedran um, Hades on the Switch. And because nobody does it on the Switch, I would have been second to last on the submitted listings at like 16 minutes. Yeah, you could say I'm a bit of a gamer myself. Golden Eye. You mean that really old game? I remember my college, uh, one of my college buildings had a Golden Eye console, or rather, it was. Um, whatever console Golden Knight was out on. So these stabilizers were lubed with Super Lube? Either Super Lube or Permatex Dielectric. Um, and the only place I lubed them is right under the wire and uh, into the insert from underneath. And that gives me the flexibility to add, later add lube uh, after the board's been assembled. All right, today the switches are gonna be creams, mostly. Uh, reason being I've had these for a while and I'm trying to go through my stock and uh, yeah these were previously in my Singa uh, I don't know how long ago that was and uh, I didn't have quite enough so I'm using these leftover uh, was it Duroc L2 
Um, and it's all been looped with a very light coat of Crytox 205G0. Um, most of the springs have been swapped to Cat Wee Wee 55 gram. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember, but it was sold by Switch Mod way back in the day uh, to counter Spirit or Sprit, Sprit Springs. Um, they were sold originally as 67 grams, but ended up being 55 grams. I tried multiple times to use them in uh, tactile switches, but they never really worked out. But uh, I have that board over there built with 55 grams, uh, the same same exact springs. So, um, and, and it feels really good. But we'll see how that pans out on a brass plate. Do I intend to build this, uh, use this board a lot? Uh, well, we'll see. I'm a little bit skeptical because of the brass plate. Um, I like piping on waterbeds, basically. And brass plate is as far as you can get from a waterbed. Uh, well, maybe stainless steel is worse. Or maybe integrated. Or thick integrated. But I would never buy those. Can I give you a stab test? I'll do it after it's built. I will be soldering, surprisingly. The plate is nice and tight. I really like it. Everything snaps into place. I know the HBCP's been around for a while. Curious as to what you guys think of it. Like, is it kind of an unattainable board? Because I know, like, I bought it within seconds of it being available. And mech market prices are kind of ridiculous. Yeah, I only use the Gator Agnolos for testing and I, I don't know I might even change that up because it really just sucks the soul out of the hobby for me. Like it's useful, but I think my process might change from uh, change to actually building with something I would like, uh, testing it for a while, writing my review, and then uh, uh, right before review, rebuilding it with stock adder on yellows, and then proceeding. Because the backlog of keyboards that I need to review is so long that I end up just using stock getter on yellows just on my day to day, and that kind of sucks. I'm going to be building with uh, the 7U bottom row, which is going to be 1.2, 1.5U keys uh, on both sides. I think I might be using the wrong PCB. I was shipped another one because of some issue with RGB. I can't remember if this is the right one or if this is the old one. I feel like the new one has a cut for the, the daughter board cable. If it's not, I'll just build it again. It's fine.
because the L2 switches have different springs, I'm going to be using them just on the F row. I barely touch those anyway. So that's probably the right hole. The PCB seems to be ops compatible. I'm not sure about, well, uh, the plate isn't. So I think you're gonna have to get a custom one. I think uh, Heine talked about releasing an ISO plate, but ended up shipping a universal one anyway. Not sure what the deal is. All right, so the PCB marks the seven you stab, but doesn't mark which ones are the right um, bottom row keys. A little bit inconvenient. Speaking of Alps, I recently built a TKL with Alps White, the clicky, light clicky. It's been great. I had to do multiple passes of cleaning the switches though. Um, if you go on my Instagram, I have a post about the board that the switches came in. Truly horrendous. So clearly it's not this one. It's probably the further one for 1.5 U. This seems right. And I know this supports 3 1U as well. This looks about right. I've heard of the new Zio clickies. Are they actually just called clickies with the Z? Kind of corny, but they look really interesting. I I watched the 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 one video about it, and it seems like it's more trying to go after the blue Alps kind of feel rather than the white Alps kind of feel, which is what I'm looking for. And they're really expensive, so. But I like to see some different stuff come into play in the Switches market. I, I don't think I'm gonna be taking a look at those because, you know, I after Xeno, I don't know if I should be supporting Zeal. What other Thaki switches? So, I don't know. I don't really know how the kids nowadays define Thak. I don't know if I've ever known how it's been defined. Put my mask on. But my interpretation is that the switches with long poles, um, where the, the pole of the stem bottoms out on the bottoms out rather than the, what do you call, uh, rather than the bottom of the rails. I think those, that sound I interpret as thoughty. I'm using a pine sole connected to a laptop charger. I don't have a fume extractor, but my mask is pretty good. 100% keyboard. Oh man. I like I only know of a couple ones. Um I know I've seen some people on Discord designing one. Um I know the mountain exists. But other than that, I feel like you're stuck with the MF108 
or 104, I can't remember. But that doesn't have, uh, what do you call? Um, that doesn't have uh, programmability and other enthusiast features. It's kind of difficult soldering from a mile away, but the upside is that uh, the smoke kind of avoids my face. I think people nowadays just associate thought to sounding nice. Hmm. LZ Trick X. I haven't heard of it. How how much is that? A full size LZ. I think the last I heard of something like that is the LZ RV, I think. The one with the numpad on the left side. Oh by the way. Um, it kind of seems like LZ physics prices are really low. Did I do that? I, I don't want to be presumptuous, but... I feel like every listing goes for under MSRP. Cool Pinesel, everyone should buy at least 10 when they restock. Stop chilling. Yeah, this pine saw is like, what, $20 shipped? But I guess I already had a power supply. Are SP Meteors tactile? I think I remember people recommending it on the uh, Dorok Light tactile video. I've been meaning to try it out, but let me liquidate some garbage switches first. Flip pines will stop for a hundred dollars. The last soldering iron I bought was, uh, I forget what it's called, but it had a little, little box that looked like a, like a headphone amp. I shocked the box and it killed the entire iron. Exact same problem as custom keyboards. Very cool. It was $85 on Amazon. LZRX. You know what LZ board I want? The uh, iron. I think that board is so funny. It's like if Asus ROG made a custom keyboard. What was that from 2017? Those were the days. Leopold compact full size with Topper. So, uh, for the full size enthusiasts in chat, do you guys consider uh, 1800 and 1800 CP layouts to be full size or do they not count? What if you're just really good at shocking electronics? Yes, I am really good. That's because I wear slippers indoors and I build up a massive amount of static. So there, there are certain boards I can't use at all um, during the winter. Like I, I can't use the IDB60. I killed all of the LEDs on the Space 65 by shocking it. Um, I had a Red Scarf 96 just completely murdered by 
one of the biggest shocks I've ever experienced in my life. Um, the minivans, when I had it, they were really, like they would turn off with even the slightest imperceptible shocks. Really cool stuff. You, nowadays I just use boards that my friend made and they're, they, they've been shock tested. The meteors are linears. Have you considered carpeting your floors wall to wall in anti-static mats? That's a really good idea. 1000 likes on this video and I'll do it. Have you seen the F1 8K layup? 8K? I have I haven't even heard of that one. Similar to Quickfire. Oh, Quickfire TK was my second mechanical keyboard ever. It was really cool. I wouldn't consider 1800 as full size. Uh, even though um, the it has an extra column, it's a little bit taller than full size, right? Or strictly speaking, uh, Cherry's 1800 is a little deeper than Cherry's 3000, I think. In my opinion, 1800 non-compact has a little bit of a weird messy look on the right upper corner. I can tell some of these solder joints are coming out gnarly. I'll touch them out after stream. F1 8K has a numpad instead of arrows, same as the F1 8X. Interesting. So I've been hearing a little bit about like one of their keyboards not being, having an error or something. Anyone know what that's about? Errors on weights and analyzation. Ouch. F2 is terrible. How much was it? Hello, Jerry. Top piece not being machined properly. Oh, that's unexpected given everything I've heard about uh, Gion. These guys took a responsibility. Interesting. I wish other group by runners would take responsibility. I think the Space 65's PCB was either bad or improper and it would lead to a lot of units dying. An original group by joiners weren't even notified of the Cyber Voyager run. I would have bought another PCB if I had. Or I guess the most recent example is the Unigo 66. The runner's gone. Like I didn't mention in the video, but that group I, the, the buy itself was shaky. It barely even delivered. People were waiting on, like people who joined in the second wave got theirs first. 
potentially because they still had PayPal protection. Hi, you are allowed if you are not neat. But neats will get priority. Priority what? I don't know. Full refunds and free top casing replacement and priority on the next round of F2. Hmm. How do you guys feel about buying the same board twice? Because I don't really see the, see the appeal in something like that. Like I only have one hand pair, one pair. All right, home stretch, almost done. An F1 in my latest, I do not have an F1. Uh, if you're talking about the TKL, it's a uh, TKL that one of my friends designed. Oh, by the way, high glasses. two different colors yeah I guess okay to be fair I did buy the same board twice the board my friend designed uh, I have two of them one has a brass bottom This wire is obnoxious. Am I doing something wrong? Oh my god. There we go. Uh, I will not be doing an HPCP review. Also, I'm not sure when my next review video will be because I'll be starting on a new job uh, this coming Monday, and I assume I'll be needing to 
bust my ass for six months. But I've been thinking about an idea for a YouTube short. I know a lot of you probably hate those, but I have a HHKV2 Pro 2 and a HHKV, um, HHKV Classic, is that what they call it? Basically three. And I've noticed some differences in keycaps for those, and I just want to make a listicle um, video. Short and sweet. The thing with my uh, the TKL that I'm using, the, the one I have two of, is that it's mounted to the top by the PCB rather than the plate. Um, and that's the entire reason I like it. And you don't come across those very often, so I figured I should get two. Alright, um, because I guess we're not doing a review, I can do a quick little rundown of PC quality. Um, in short, it's very good. The texture is really nice. It's a little bit on the rougher side, but it doesn't feel like the polycarbonate itself is what's causing the roughness. Like maybe it's the coating. Heine said it was coated in some way. It's like, feels a little sandy, but it has the look of a really um, clean and polished polycarbonate. So the polycarbonate, definitely the best looking I've seen. Brass Plus top mount was refreshing after a while. Yeah, sometimes I'll go months uh, using waterbed keyboards and it is kind of cool to use a stiff build from time to time but I do usually end up going back so what I'm really uh, excited for in the keyboards space is I ordered a Lulu it's that aluminum split ergo type thing basically as a consolation to my totally dead Unigo 66. And I'm hoping that one will be good because I think it'll be a good work keyboard. What keycaps you've been saving this for? Very good question. This keyboard deserves one key set and one key set only. Hunter Bite. Why did I decide to keep the brass plate? Um, I can't, it's been a while, but I, I think this was the default in the group buy. And I didn't at the time want to buy uh, the FR4 plate. I think that was the other one that was offered. I think if I were to buy it again, I'd buy the FR4 plate. But apparently the brass plate is sort of the intended experience. So I'll take uh, I'll take his word for it. The 
Did the uh, the second run of Hunterbite ship yet? I know that was wildly successful for some reason. For the PC finish, have you seen Norbauer's vid? Yeah, I, I've seen it. And I thought about doing it on the E6.5 because it was so bad. But... I don't know. I like. It's a big step uh, to, you know, knowingly alter the keyboard. Um, I felt that way when I was doing the polishing um, for three of my keyboards. But it was also a great reminder that keyboards are just kind of hunks of metal. And like, don't get so mad about them or don't spend too much money on them. Wait a second. Oh my God, I did this wrong. I didn't realize this wouldn't be a full numpad. Whoops. Uh, who uses numpad anyway? Probably fine. And these are Dorok L2s on the numpad, and I'm only using those because I didn't have enough creams. I'm just trying to get through all of the loose parts I have. this up a little bit. This is the HBCP, the way it's always meant to look, except for this part. Pay no attention to that part. HPCP with GMK Hunterbite looks incredible. Absolutely amazing. Look at that, just, just the perfect pairing. Show off all of the colors, well, almost all of them, in Hunterbite, while not actually needing to use a full size. Just love it. Alright, let's try to get a real quick typing test in. Um, you're going to have to give me a little bit of time to set up the microphone and all that. One second.
I did have my mic on for that, right? Sounds alright, right? Well, it it sounds like it sounds like the Senga, which is the exact same configuration as this one. But stabs turned out fine, it seems, except for the numpad ones. They're a little, a little wonky. Yeah, I guess this sounds and feels exactly like I expected. Um, you know, no flex, bounce, you know, vibrations. There's nothing there. Um, this might be my first time using particularly light linears on such a hard setup. And I know some people were saying, you know, the, the brass plate makes sense for this build. I implying that it would be somehow different from other brass plates doesn't really seem to be the case. It seems fine. It seems exactly the same as the Singa. And yeah, it's pretty good. I like it. Uh, I'm not sure if I would be using this all the time, but I really love the way this looks. And I found that for, at least for myself, uh, that is a big factor in whether or not I actually pick up a keyboard to use. So that's been a good build. It's been a long time coming for this keyboard. It is finally out of the closet, but maybe it's going back in there. I will fix this. <laughs> It'll be a little bit of a struggle because, you know, it's all soldered together and all that, but I'll fix this with a 1U0 key and we should be all set. So yeah, that would be the complete opposite of this keyboard, which is PCB mount, no plate, um, same weight of switches, but super light, um, probably sounds a little plasticky from having no plate, and super bouncy, etc. But yeah, thanks for tuning in. Um, you know, leave questions uh, for, uh, we can do like five minute Q&A if you want. Um, but otherwise, uh, that would be it. Um, I'm not sure about the stream of content that will be coming in the coming weeks or months, really. I will be working um, at a new job, uh, getting up to speed and all that. So I'm not sure uh, how much free time I'll have. Um, both in terms of time and energy. Uh, I think you could maybe expect to see some like either low quality, low effort or otherwise short videos, um, but long form reviews uh, like I usually do is probably gonna be um, not coming soon. So yeah, uh, thanks for tuning in. If there are no question, I'll go ahead and end it there. Um, yeah, thank you guys. See ya.